Welcome back. Um, we now have Mark Pollard, who's standing for the Stanley, Stanley constituency, and uh, you were a member in the last assembly, so uh, you'll be fairly familiar with this process. What skills do you believe you bring to the assembly, uh, if elected, what, and what portfolios would interest you? Yeah, I mean, the skills is a different one. I, I believe I bring energy, um, resourcefulness, commitment, desire. Um, hopefully I've got experience now as well, Richard. Um, and and leadership, I, I hope. Um, certainly the COVID taught us a bit about that. But um, yeah. but I think um, in terms of portfolios, I really enjoyed having the trade and industry portfolio. Um, I think if I had to choose another one, um, I would probably be looking more towards the commercial services with the port, with the air links, um, resumption. Uh, Similar. There's, there's a lot yeah. going on, and um, or, or perhaps even PWD. But, but I can see something positive in everyone. Mm. What are the main issues you think it, that are going to... The, the new assembly is going to focus on. I, I think there's going to be a huge amount of issues. We're not we're, we're not done with um, COVID and Brexit yet. I think that's still going to linger on for a little bit longer, uh, possibly forever in terms of COVID. But I think the um, you know the, the big issues are going to be uh, aside from that are going to be the environment, um, education, health, um, the economy. Uh, all of these are interlinked in some way, yeah. but uh, but they're they're the main sort of items for me. When elected, members are usually fairly well aware of the opinions of the public. If elected, how would you intend to remain aware of uh, these opinions at a later date? Uh, Facebook's been used, but unfortunately it appears that people are inclined to grandstand on Facebook and it's not really the opinions of the general public. No, I, it's becoming more and more evident to me that uh, social media can actually be quite poisonous. Yes. But, um, but I think I've tried to make myself as approachable as possible and, um, and, and I thought that was the answer, but I don't think that's enough on its own. I think, you know, you have to make yourself as approachable as you possibly can be. I encourage people to talk to me wherever they want, in, in whatever way they want to engage. But, um, but I think there, it's clear to me, particularly during COVID, that there are some voices that just aren't heard, no matter how approachable you try to make yourself. So you have to actively go and seek people's opinions. And, and I think that's something that I've learned that I need to do a lot more of. A, a number of large but essential infrastructure um, projects are scheduled or even underway, uh, such as the port, the new power station, Tussock House. Do you have any thoughts about how these should be funded? Absolutely. I think, you know, every, every year we go through the, um, the budget process, we, we put down some fairly rigid, um, some rigid rules about how we, how we budget, how we pay for things. There's been, always been the, um, the, the retaining in reserve of two and a half times our operational expenditure. I'm not exactly sure how we got to that figure, but I, I support sort of remaining there. It seems like a sensible enough area. Um, in, case, in terms of the port, I think it's probably going to require borrowing to, um, to be able to finance it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but um, but I don't think we have an economy without a port. An island without a port is a uh, is a, is a rare thing, and for good reason. And, and almost all of our revenue uh, depends on on the port. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the uh, most common issues which you hear discussed on the streets at the moment is salmon farming. This could become a very valuable industry, but it's also coupled with lots of dire warnings about pollution and such like. Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, I mean, nothing I've seen so far makes me want to have a, um, you know, a, a large offshore um, open pen salmon farming um, industry here. It's, um, I, I think we still need to, um, to do all of the work to understand the, the legislation and the policy work behind um, the existing aquaculture we have. You know, perhaps there's a future for it onshore, Richard, I'm, I'm not sure. But I think, you know, we have to be very wary of the environmental implications. But at the moment, I'm certainly not in favour of, uh, of, of saying yes to salmon farming. Mm -hmm. Communication speeds, um, they've become quite an issue both in Camp and Stanley. Um, how can the Falklands receive similar quality of service that people expect around the world? Well, I, I mean, for a start, I would say that it's not just speed, it's speed and quality, I think, is, yes. is, is key. But, um, but I think there's only two ways you can get there, and that's through um, innovation and investment. Um, so, so it's either going to require um, a step change in technology or, um, or a step change in investment, or, or perhaps a little bit of both. 
But um, but I think we need to pressure the, um, the the monopoly at the moment to tell us how they're going to improve the service. As I say, in terms of quality and and um, speed and cost, perhaps as well. Yeah. And um, and and actually have a program of that we can see and, and step through and say, well, this is how we're going to make it a better service. Can we talk about climate change? It's becoming uh, an issue that cannot be ignored. What steps should the Falklands take to make the, the islands more carbon neutral? And given that the renewable energy is, has developed considerably in the last few years, do you support the development of uh, the new power station relying more on uh, renewable energy? Absolutely. I think it's, um, it's essential. I think um, you know, when we see the development in the camp, uh, there's more and more renewable energy and, um, and to be honest they're putting the government to shame in certain areas. Certainly in terms of Fox Bay it's, it's not renewable at all. In Stanley you know, we have about 30% at the moment or a third generated um, through the wind turbines. But I think we should be investigating solar or you know, possibly more wind turbines, whether or not we can store some of that energy. Uh, I think it's a massive area that, that needs a lot of improvement. Um, I, I've got quite a, a lot of this in my manifesto, but even then it doesn't go anywhere near mm -hmm. sort of touching on all the things that we need to do. Falkland Conservation have produced a document, uh, 2021 election, uh, getting the green vote, laying out their ideas for a more green, a green election and green Falklands. Um, I take it you've read it. What, have you got any uh, comments on that? I, I, it was really welcomed by me. I, I actually found it really useful in um, in terms of informing myself and helping to uh, to think what what areas I should be looking at and uh, and driving at. Um, I've been involved with the, um, the the policy formulation of the environment strategy, um, but it's it's important that these groups keep to um, keep informing us yeah. because uh, as MLAs, Richard, you know, we're, we're not experts. We um you know we make the best decisions we can given the information we have. And groups like conservation informing us in this way, it is it's a fantastic thing to be welcomed. Yes. There's been a lot of um, criticism rec recently about the level of, of, of pensions, which has still fell fall well below the living wage. In view of the fact that, in the, during their working years, many um, present pensioners did not have the ability to uh, actually have a, pen a separate pension scheme, and those who did, the income is derisory. How can we deal with this? Well, I think for a start, with the um, with pensions in this in this last budget, I think um, you know we we took the same approach that we always have, and um, with hindsight, you know perhaps we should have actually looked at putting pensions up. It's um, you know, and, and for for my part, Nate, you know, I I apologise, but um, but I think I would certainly um, certainly look again at pensions. There's an actuarial review coming up, a, a sort of complete review of the pension scheme. Um, I've asked in the house for um, you know exactly what that will contain. And, um, and I want to see it have um, you know, options on, on what it's going to cost us to increase the, uh, the, pensions, um, uh, the pensions that people can, can take, the state pension. Um, so so we'll, we'll see that work and I, I would certainly be in favour of looking at it again and, um, and whether or not we can put it up. I would also say that at the moment when you look at worldwide inflation, uh, if we stuck to the same principle again, it's looking very likely that there will be a significant hike in pensions, salaries in government and, and you know, all sorts of things like that. So, uh, so, you know, perhaps it's coming anyway. It's been suggested in many circles that uh, members spend too much time overseas and not enough time on local issues. Do you have any comment? And if elected, would you continue to be willing to travel overseas? Yeah, I, I absolutely would be willing to travel overseas. I, I find it essential. It's not part of the job I, I particularly enjoy. I mean, I, um, I, I'm starting to appreciate it more now, but, um, but I would rather, much rather be at home with my family and, uh, and, and working here. Yeah. However, um, I think there's, there's different ways we can do things. We need, to, um, we need more people coming here seeing the Falklands for themselves. There are people who we can't bring here or, or, or are you know, too busy on other things that they can't come and see it for themselves. I think in that case either we need to engage virtually or we need to go away ourselves and, um, and sell a message. It's unfortunate that we have to do it. We shouldn't have to. The rest of the world should appreciate uh, the position we have and support our right to self-determination. Unfortunately, uh, that isn't the, uh, the unanimous case. No, that's right. Housing appears to be a problem area. Um, can you see way, ways that the lower paid can actually get on the housing ladder, particularly now that uh, land prices have increased, uh, increased quite considerably, and then they have the cost of the house on top, and it's uh, people just can't get a mortgage to cover that. Yeah, so we only managed to get the housing um, 
the housing strategy out before the uh, before yeah. the end of the assembly. Um, we we really pushed and wanted it earlier. Uh, I think key in that is um, is informing people about how much it costs to build a house. But there are other things like um, like uh, discussions with the bank to say, well, you know, why aren't you lending to these people? And um, and and if necessary, as a government, how do we how do we step in to bridge that gap? Or are we charging too much of the initial development itself to first time buyers? Or, or are we not putting enough plots for first-time buyers? And all of these things can can remedy that. But it's just, you know, we, we have to understand that if you're taking money from one pot, you're, you're taking yes. money from something else. So yeah. you have to balance it out. But I think there are certainly things we can do. Um, the global pandemic has created many problems uh, within the last 18 months. And the Falklands have been uh, very lucky to actually avoid major problems. However, it has raised the issue of how vulnerable the Falklands are to um, supplies of food from overseas and supplies of services from overseas. Should, should this be addressed in some way? I, I think we're always taking steps to try and address it, but it's very difficult because, um, you know, if we can minimise the, the imports into the islands, and that's got to be a good thing, and, and make things locally or... Uh, or you know, I mean, agriculture, for example, we can't we can't force people to to open another dairy or to um, or, or people to um, to open bakeries or, uh, or or any of these things. But um, but certainly we can support them. Or people growing fruit and veg. But certainly we can support them where we can, and that's that's what we should be looking to do. Right. Do you have any other issues that you want to talk to talk about before we finish? I, I just wanted to say that um, you know, if if I if I don't get elected, then good luck to the other people who do and. Um, and obviously, I want to. I love this job, and I love this country, and I want to serve another another four years for sure. And um, but uh, but if that doesn't happen, then I would just thank everybody for who voted for me last time and uh, and giving me the opportunity to have done it. It's been a fantastic experience, and again, I hope I can do it again for another four years. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Richard.